Hello everybody and welcome back to the building of the Keelcraft Ladybird. It's the beginning of another week and as is often the case in the northeast of England it's raining again so it's time to get a little bit of building done. Last week I finished building or making both of the wings. They're now finished and sitting ready at one site to be covered and I thought a little bit about how I'm going to approach this. I did mention that I perhaps I might put a micro servo in the back and this area here will certainly have to be modified to take to make a bigger rudder but it's pretty obvious that um, this model got its reputation of a flying brick not by accident because it seems to be massively over engineered in terms of the material that um, goes into it. I've selected or I've had a look at the wood that's in the kit and the first thing that I've done is something I always do if I've got a kit and that is I grade the balsa from lightest to heaviest. It's fairly easy to do that's obviously a light piece of balsa it bends very easily and at the other extreme this is a hard piece of balsa which is much heavier to the feel. I have actually uh, in the past, just to see how accurate you are at selecting wood like this, put it on some very fine scales that my son uh, left behind when he moved out the house. And it's surprisingly accurate how um, you can actually feel the difference. So the lightest, uh, right the way through, they were all in order. I didn't know what they weighed, but when I weighed them with the scales, uh, I've actually managed to put them in order of weight. So it's, it's a useful thing to do. What I'm going to try and do is use the heavier balsa towards all the areas where there's going to be a lot of structural uh, strain on them. So if I zoom in a little bit, obviously this area that supports the wing is going to be under more strain than, say, these cross members. And also to try and keep the weight down, I'll use the lightest pieces for the rear of the aircraft and the heavier pieces towards the front. Apparently from feedback that I've had on previous videos, um, it didn't get its reputation of a flying brick by accident. And the word seems to be that under power it was fine, but then when the engine stopped, we're talking about free flight now, it came down like a brick. I hope that with radio control, that would be manageable. At least you'd have, I'll have, rudder and elevator to manage if it's coming down rather quickly, I can try and flare it out. So the first thing that I need to do is to actually make two sides. And this is the outline. It's these members here, which are 3 16 I think it prob probably could have got away with eight. In fact, I might change these at the back, cut some eight and do that. They need to be doubled up. And then once they're made, the formers can go in place to actually give it its box structure. I have had to modify these plywood um, wing roots, which support the plug-in wings, because the balsa, the plywood that's supplied to go in was thicker than the one shown on the plan but that's fine I've got it now so that they slot in quite nicely and they are part of the integral structure of the two sides so I'll pause for a second and then we'll start laying out the um, the main structure of the model so I've selected some wood here that will take a bend better than some of the harder material and I'm go I've wet it and applied a little bit of steam and I'm going to use some pins to hold it into position and I'm not pinning it directly I'm actually going through some well sacrificial wooden blocks shall we call them I try to avoid pinning through the actual spars and stringers if I can because if you push pushing pins through it you're not doing anything in terms of helping the strength of the wood. 
fact you're just building a weakness into it helps if you've got a pin that will actually go into the board so I'm clamping this bit to begin with there you go Let's see if I can bring that it's quite a strain on there And the design of the model, which I want to stick to as, with as much authenticity as I can, actually calls for these stringers to be notched into one another. Now, it's not something I've actually come across before, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but I'm going to stick with the idea and see how it goes. I would normally just rely on the glue with perhaps some gussets in to provide the strength but this actually calls for the wood to be notched we'll see how that goes whether I'm happy with it or not but I will try to stick to the original design as much as I can and this is probably the most awkward piece to put in because of the curve and after that it should get a little bit easier there's a curve on this one as well which I'll use a softer piece of wood for that's the beginning of the structure I'll put this one in next I think um, that looks there like that's calling for a notch because it wouldn't make a lot of sense to actually if you can see that To me that should be one piece and this is obviously there to impart strength so I would imagine that here if you're going to use a notching technique that's where you would do it. So I'll try to do that with that piece of wood. There we go that's pinned down. Just put a couple of pins in here. It's getting to the stage where some of these pins have been battered and bent and should really be thrown out. There's nothing more frustrating than going into the box and pulling out a pin that's bent. Right. That one would go there. Could go there. I need to cut the end. Which I'll do. Needs more of an angle on it. I must admit I don't tend to do a lot of marking and measuring when I'm doing something like this. I do a lot of it just by eye. But that might just could be from experience. I've built quite a few models and I suppose over time that eye sort of develops. It's like any sort of handcraft I would imagine there now I will mark this however because this is where the notch would need to be here and here I'm not sure how this is going to work but we'll try it and then I want a light piece that wood's light to go there well let's get this cut to length first I am going to mark this, you know. And there. And there's a notch needed here, according to this. I'll see if I can cut it out, I'll see how it goes. So I'm trying to cut a notch out of here to take this wood. Where am I? There you are. This one. So, let's zoom out again so you can see what I'm doing.
I'm just using a balsa knife to do this. Or scalpel rather. Could cut it out I suppose with a razor saw. And if I can if I can crack this, I think it will make for a stronger bond. Well that's that piece out, notched. It's probably just as well to actually pin that I think, yes. What do you think? Don't all shout at once. My grandmother, my maternal grandmother, used to talk to the TV and would expect an answer. <laughs> Lovely woman. Right, we'll pin that in place and glue it to here. And I'm almost exclusively going to use CA for this, simply because I think I can keep the weight down by using CA rather than white glue. And I'm going to use the capillary nature of the wood to help with that. Now, of course, I've put that piece of wood down now, haven't I? Where did I put it? There it is. <clears throat> so, it's the opposite way. So, I need to do the other side. That was silly. Let's transfer it. This may be a little bit of trail and error, we'll see. How many of you hold your breath when you're cutting? I know I do. You can't see me on camera, it's probably just as well. The tongue's hanging out as well at the same time. Apparently that's due to the fact that the part of your brain that deals with concentration is also linked to the, or it's close to the part of your brain that does taste. So it's quite a common thing to do. Well, that's my excuse anyway. Will they go together? It's not far off, you know. I'm going to slightly widen that. This needs a piece cutting now. Ah, oh, interesting that, and it's definitely going to produce a very strong joint. Oh, I like that. That's something I think I'll try and incorporate into my other modelling that I do, or other model planes that I build. I like that technique, really effective. So, let's pin this down, it's on a slight curve. Normally I would avoid pinning and pulling round like that because you can put a dint in the wood. But I think this is going to be fine, it's not a massive strain. I'll cut that trim later. I'm going to concentrate on putting this piece in here and I did see I've used some heavier wood for that this is this is harder definitely harder wood so that will go in there need to cut the angle do that now 
I will use the razor saw for this bit. Quite an acute. Is it acute? No, that wasn't far off. And you want it as square as possible, obviously, because that increases the surface area. You don't want any gaps with CA. Very little in terms of a gap. Yes, happy with that. Yeah. Cut that off to the format. I've got some um, food wrap cling film on the plan to preserve the plan if I ever did want to build it again or pass it on to somebody or perhaps do a repair but the other thing is you don't want to be trying to get bits of paper off your balsa model and it does sort of peel off this fairly easily I have tried wax paper Depending on the make, some of it pulls away quite nicely and others doesn't, so I've gone back to using this. So, what I'll do now, I'll pause the video, or rather I'll do it as a time lapse so you can see what I'm doing, and I'll build the rest of the structure up, because it gets quite laborious just watching me cutting bits of wood. But at least if it's fast forwarded or time, time lapsed, you can fast forward if you wish to do so. I'll zoom in a little bit and we'll get this structure built up. Just back to a little bit of video in here, I've actually um, notched these formers here, or the former stringers here, and actually I really do like the technique, it takes a little bit of care, um, it's a little bit more demanding, but I'm, I'm positive now that that's going to make for a very, very strong structure, uh, and didn't do it on this one, but I think I'll need to, to put this, this in, and then I'll carry on back to the time lapse and you can see me finish off the remaining part of this along with these this front part yeah really like that Okay folks, so here we go. It's now completed at the back end. I think I'm going to create a rudder here that's twice the width of the one that's shown on here, or, or four. I may even bring it a little bit lower down, I'm not sure. The elevator is going to be simply the extended part that comes out from the horizontal tail surface. So that's one side done. And now it's a case of repeating that to create a duplicate side, give it a sand down and then start putting the horizontal formers in. This is one side completed now. Um, I've added these four little inserts which form part of the window. I won't put the other small ones in until they're the two sides are together. I'll just simply do these rear ones and we're a little bit more substantial. So they're glued in place now. That's the basic structure. I need to produce a second side, trim these off and then I have the formers themselves 
to go in place so this is the forward one they need, they need to be a little bit of whittling to get them to fit all the other plywood parts have needed work on them one to fit there and one to fit here and obviously that triangular shape imparts a great deal of strength to the structure and it needs to because that's where the engine bearers will be so I'll pause it now call it a day at that I think for now I'll get the other side done and when I come to pull the two sides together uh, we'll return for a part two video of building the fuselage of this wonderful model the ladybird it may fly like a brick but it's got tons of character and that's a big part of the fun thanks for watching now if you haven't done so please subscribe if you don't mind give me a thumbs up and that helps the algorithm spread the word to other modelers thanks for watching now take care